Was that live? All right. Just... Good morning. Hey, we're live, I think. Good morning, Michael. Good <laughs> morning. How are you? I'm good. I'm Joe Sims, and welcome to This Week at the Communist Party. I am sitting here with Michael Lynch, um, who is a member of the party back in my home state. He's a Buckeye, or at least a resident Buckeye at Ohio University. Um, and Michael is part of a collective uh, that is of our younger comrades that is about to launch a new uh, podcast, right? Yep, that's what we're doing. Podcast. And um, what's that about? I mean... Well, what's it not about? That's the better question. And well, I don't know. Tell us. Tell us <laughs> well, what we're doing is, as Joe was saying, is we're, we put together kind of a youth initiative to kind of tell about the party and the individuals in the party and what it's like to be a communist. Mm. And we're kind of breaking into different groups to talk about the party's history, ideology, uh, the kind of issues that we're tackling as, as, as a party in terms of activism, um, civil rights, labor. Um, but also just, you know, from a personal uh, standpoint in terms of, you know, how, what was it like for us younger comrades to tell our parents that we're communists or, you know, that we're active in the Communist Party? Okay. And what was it like? Did you tell your parents? Yeah. Uh, it wasn't too much of a shock considering my mm. uh, grandparents on my father's side were uh, kind of radicalized from um, Ireland. Is they came right? over, yeah. They were okay. the great old Irish Revolution. Man. Yeah, fighting the famine. Yeah, even British though they occupation. failed. <laughs> exactly. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And so it wasn't too much of a shock, and uh, but we've had some comrades that did have a shock from mm. their parents and kind of a crazy reaction. But wasn't a shock for me. No, <laughs> I was an old red diaper baby, you know, going back three generations. So uh, that's great. And uh, when will it launch? It should launch, the first episode should be launched uh, two weeks from now, and it's going to be posted to the uh, cpusa.org website page. Okay, and, uh, and so this is a podcast of our younger comrades, and so it's like uh, one of the beginnings of reestablishing the party's youth work, wouldn't you say? Exactly, okay. yeah, and it's open to everyone. Everyone can listen because we're going to be talking about, of course, the youth question and kind of uh, perspectives from the youth. It's a but big question. The, it is. Oh, absolutely. And very um, essential now with all this excitement about socialism, or at least how people understand it today. Right. Uh, and we're kind of trying to, we're going to try to hit the, you know, a home run on explaining, you know, that we do want reforms. Reforms are great, but we want to go the full nine yards, full 10 yards, I guess, in it's terms of, yeah, it's a revolution and revolution. having socialism, yeah. But there's no path to revolution, but through the struggle for reform, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Some people say revolution in, the, you know, 2019, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how? But, huh? <laughs> I said how. Yeah, Can't exactly. be immediate. <laughs> I mean, even the Russian Revolution was fought on the issues of peace, bread, and land. Absolutely. You know? So, uh, and today the issues are what? A Green New Deal, jobs, uh, education. Absolutely. Free education. Yeah. Healthcare. Healthcare. Care, opioid epidemic, the environment, and uh, so on yeah. and so forth. So those are all very big issues. Uh, speaking of issues, there was a scandal involving college admissions. Uh, yeah. What's up with that? You something know, about, you know, they're I being read too much about it. But. Yeah, something. And they actually uh, released something about it uh, yesterday mm. on the people's world and mm. how um, people, you know, the 1% have all these loopholes. And it's really unfair because you consider people black and brown uh, millennials getting into college mm. today. You know, they don't have those loopholes. And no. so it's being restricted like everything else in the capitalist society to the right. 1%. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, well, they've always had loop for those, those legacy admissions, you know, if your mother or father went to the school, you gave a lot of money, you got a, a affirmative action Absolutely. for the rich, you know, you had mm -hmm. a place uh, secured, uh, which is why one of the big fights today is the fight for free admissions, you know, to mm -hmm. universities. Absolutely. They say we can't afford it, but... My opinion is that we can't afford not to do it. Exactly. Know? We can afford a $6 billion wall, you know, right. surely we can afford that in healthcare. And we can't afford the student debt, which is, which is huge. Um, and I feel like the student debt is what kind of like what Fidel Castro used to say, say about the third world debt, yes. you know, it's not payable and it's not collectible, you know, yeah. so declare a moratorium, moratorium on it, had a little trouble getting moratorium out. 
de declare a moratorium on it and uh, and uh, let's fight to make tuition free. Yes. I don't know if that's on an agenda of the presidential candidates uh, this time around, but it ought to be. It ought to be. It yeah. Ought to be, you know? uh, do we know if Beto has said anything about it? He's the, oh, our you newest. Oh, he's kind of a center of the road kind of guy. You know, yeah. he's talking about unity, which is a good thing. Uh -huh. But what his program is, um, I don't know. Um, they say Biden is going to get into the race. Uh, and um, my theory is that Beto came in in order to take Biden out. You know, not yeah, because they're both yeah. kind of appealing to moderates and the uh, center. Absolutely. And then there's a new mayor uh, in Florida, an African American guy who has now put his hat in the race. And my theory about that is that he's coming in in order to take Kamala Harris out. You know what I mean? Split the vote. Mm -hmm. You know, be interesting to see so, which which of these candidates actually team up in the end. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That will be interesting too but bernie is still you know pushing hard he's close to number one if not number one and um elizabeth warren mm -hmm. she has a good program yeah know, it's kind of an anti-monopoly program mm -hmm. she's calling for breaking up the but you know uh so, let me finish the thought she's talking about breaking up the big mega corporations you know like microsoft and Google and Facebook and so on and so mm -hmm. forth, which would be a, a good, but they keep introducing the issue of socialism into the race. They ask over everybody. And over <laughs> again. Are you a capitalist, you know? Um, and the woman from um, Hawaii, uh, what's her name? Gabbard. Gabbard. We'll see Gabbard. She wouldn't answer the question. You know, she kind of dodged it, which I thought was kind of good. And she's really good on the imperialism yeah. issue in yeah. Venezuela. Yeah, she's so. quite she's quite good. Uh, but Warren said, yes, I am a I favor markets, you know, mm. but she said in some places markets don't work. Healthcare, for example, is not mm. it's not a serious mm -hmm. uh, approach to, to health care, which I think is. a. But I think that we need to get into this discussion about socialism, you know, what it is and what it isn't and 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 on that issue um some people are uh kind of poo-pooing the identification mm. with socialism in our ranks saying that people don't really understand it they mm. all they think it's you know uh, public education or mm. health care um but i don't quite understand why they're poo-pooing it because to me, it's a door, you know, absolutely opening the conversation mm -hmm. to what socialism is, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, uh, and so that's a big issue too, and, and and it's something that are you guys talking about that on the podcast? Yeah, that's actually something we wanted to get into, and we were just talking about it the other day, some mm -hmm. of the comrades here in New York uh, about how people even on the right, you know, they don't know how to put a name with a face, but I don't know very many people who would say, no, I don't want free health care or free education or quality education for my kids. Right. Uh, and so, you know, you introduce it to them in the, in, in the form of reforms. Right. Uh, but we want the full nine yards, you know, the full 10 yards, as I say. And because in your we want, opinion, what's the full 10 yards? That's seizing the means of production, putting workers in power. Right. And that's okay. what we're aiming for. Okay. Okay. And are you going to have, in your version of socialism, a, a, a socialist market economy like they have in China? Is that what you want? I would go even further than that. Further? Further than that. And that's what's really exciting okay. about uh, the idea of socialism in this country is that we're not going to have to build up our infrastructure like the Chinese True. and the Cubans and the Soviets had True. to do. You know, we're, we're ready to jump in. Right. So we, the, the, the farm is already there. You know, it's just a question of what is the content of those companies. That's what Lenin argued in imperialism, mm -hmm. didn't he? he? Says monopoly capitalism is has all of the prerequisites to social. It's just the workers don't uh, control, own, and control uh, the economy and how it's produced and mm -hmm. and all of that. Yeah, and, and how it's distributed. Absolutely, you know, how the and surplus at, is distributed. At this point, you know, how many times have we reformed capitalism since you know the Great Depression? We've well, reformed it time and time again, but it's still that. capitalism. It's right. not fair for everyone. Well, you know, it's one step forward, two steps back, you know, that's, that's because they're kind of forced to do it because they have to maintain the rate of profit. 
Absolutely. And that's 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 one of the so all of these issues are are, are coming up in the pre-convention discussion. Uh, if you want to contribute to it, you can write to discussion at cpusa.org. Let us know what you think. We just had one calling for world communist unity. Mm -hmm. And a theme in that contribution was that the communist international needs to be reestablished. What do yeah. you think about that? I think it's a good idea. Mm. Um, whether or not we can put it into practice and make it a reality is another. But uh, I do understand that we already kind of have at least, um, you know, diplomatic relationships between the parties in terms of the International Meeting of Communists and Workers' Parties. Right. But what would be the difference between that and the old common? Well, you know, the, the, the problem is that uh, one of the big problems is national sovereignty. Mm -hmm. Each party needs to be responsible for its own work. And therefore, it's really difficult to have a common uh, coordinating center deciding on what happens in different countries because people say, yo, wait a minute, you can't tell me what to do in my country. You know what I'm saying? And so that was one of the big issues that led to the dissolution of the commentary. Yeah. You know, you can't. And some parties, no matter what you do, always kind of get the idea that they're the hero party, that mm -hmm. they're what's, you know, they're, that they're all that and a bag of chips and that they think that they know better than everybody mm -hmm. else. You know, I ain't mentioned nobody's name, but <laughs> that, that, that happens. So, mm -hmm. You know, we, 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 we favor unity and common action, uh, but, you know, you have to be careful about impinging on national struggles because, you know, there are no models of socialism and there are no models of how you get there. Absolutely. You know, each country is, is uh, different. So capital is transnational. And the class struggle has to be, by definition, class struggle. Uh, also, at the trade union level, obviously, but but also on the political level, uh, both in the fraternal parties, but also in the youth organizations. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of issues. Climate change, for example, the world, that, that that you can. But you also have to do that within the context mm -hmm. of respecting the independence of each party. Yeah, absolutely, that's another that's thing that's the, going on today too. The climate, the youth climate strike today. Yeah, right? today, today in 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 DC. Mm -hmm. I hope we have some comrades there. I believe we do from yeah. Maryland, Northern Virginia. Good, good, good. So these are all of the issues that are uh, coming up in the uh, convention discussion. So we help uh, people uh, contribute to it. What, what um, else has been taking place this week? Let's see, Manafort got uh, convicted in mm -hmm. the second case. Uh, so now he has seven and a half mm -hmm. years. New Zealand. Uh, terrorist attack, white supremacy in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And uh, they killed 50 people, 49, yeah, 49 people in two yeah. different mosques. You know, it's a terrible, to, and you know, and Trump threatened the public the other, what was it, yesterday? He said, mm. I got people in the army and in the police and then the uh, motorcycle gangs for Trump and, and, and you better not make them mad or words mm -hmm. to that effect. With impeachment, yeah. He's almost ca calling for an armed insurrection. It sounds you know, like. that's very, yeah. it's very dangerous. Very, very, but the Senate and the House rebuked him twice this mm -hmm. week, once on um, Afghanistan, no, 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 Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia. and then um, the other was on the emergency funding for the uh, wall, yeah. but there are not enough votes to overturn a uh, veto, mm -hmm. he's going to veto it, but it is a break uh, somewhat, uh, a careful calculated break amongst the Republicans mm -hmm. in the Senate, but a break nonetheless. So uh, hopefully we got to keep the pressure on, you know, it's really important to keep the pressure on, keep building the opposition, uh, opposition to Trump. Um, anything else happened this, this week that, that you want to mention before we end? The party's growing. I think that's the biggest news. Oh, by the way, you know, one of the people who um, uh, upstate Bronxville that tweeted you, 
you, you sent him a tweet saying he should join, and he did. We got his, uh, and if you want to join the party, and we hope you do, you know, because we are a revolutionary party of the U.S. working Good class. year to join, too. It's the year of the 100th anniversary, you know, um, and we're having a special, you know, campaign to do that. You can join at, um, join at um, uh, cpusa.org, you mm -hmm. know. You can go to our website, it's right at the top of the page. You can join on our Facebook page, you know. Uh, we do uh, hope you, uh, you know, come on inside, you know, and help us build this uh, movement. It is uh, indeed your movement. Well, so we hope uh, that you all will check out this new podcast that's coming from the uh, Young Communist. The Spectre, that's going to be the name. The Spectre, the Spectre. our Young Communist Project. Uh, and uh, we hope you'll join us in the pre-convention uh, discussion. Join us uh, in the different struggles that are taking place over the next uh, several weeks. And uh, I think that that does it for that us does this it. morning. So um, any, thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you. you thanks know, for having me. We are looking forward to the uh, podcast. Okay, so goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Have a good weekend. Oh, by the way, Scott, you know, Scott is on a cruise. Oh, yeah. This week, boy, <laughs> and his wife and daughter are on a cruise. They're cruising in the sun, you know. Good for them. Lucky mm -hmm. them. And, but he'll be back next week, yep. you know. Even communists need a break. Even communists mm -hmm. need a break. You know, it's, you know, petty bourgeois anarchism not to take breaks, you know. We, <laughs> we're in favor of breaks for the working class, hot vacation, you know, eight hour days and, you know, um, uh, minimum wage, you know, we're, we're for all. Okay, I'm going to stop. <laughs> all right. Thanks for joining us, Michael. Thank and, you. Uh, talk to you guys later. Bye.